Hello, this is David Slee, and welcome to another Vintage Disc Golf Valley Round, dating back to April of 2019 and version number 693. This is all pre-Latitude 64, so let's see what kind of a bag is used during that time. Putter of choice back then was the Crab, and I went with the Sticky Accurate. Uh, a lot of people went with the Glide Accurate, so there were two kinds of camps, the Sticky Camp and the Glide Camp. And the mid-range that I went for was the Mud Skip, which eventually became the Fuse, and I went Accurate Sticky with that as well. And there's the little driver is what they call it, but basically the Marlin, which was sticky and accurate, that eventually became the Explorer. So it's kind of a fairway disc, as well as the three Mantas, which were the longest distance that you had in the game at the time. Those eventually became the Musket. And so since it was the longest, the three uh, ones of choice were the accurate sticky, in case you needed to precisely land and stay where you would put it, the skip accurate, in case you wanted to get as much distance as possible with the ground, and then the accurate glide, which gave you some pretty good distance in the air. So that's the bag, and let's get going. Here's the leaderboard for the day before I wound up playing. The number that you see next to each person's name is actually their rating. Previously the rating was accumulative, so the more you played the better your chances were of increasing it, and so you could see some pretty high numbers, and number one spot right there is Derek at 1910. Crazy crazy good. So let's see if we can somehow catch him. All right, we're going to get started with Crow's Nest as our first three holes. And actually, before we get started, I'm going to point out a little something. If you look at this particular hole and you look at the little map on the tee pad in the lower right, you'll notice that it says hole two. Well, you know what? This isn't hole two. This is actually hole three on Crow's Nest. And the mini map is actually upside down. So it's kind of strange, you know, some of the little minor issues. Uh, yeah, but anyway, thought I'd point that out before we get started. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and select a disc. We're going to switch it to backhand. We're going to go with the Accurate Glide Manta, throw it out over the center and let that wind just slide it on over. And, you know, draw a little metal, get somewhere close, grab our crab and throw it in. Baskets look a little different. There's no logos on them. The uh, little basket area is a little bit more shallow. Uh, let's see, with a three wind, we can't make this. Um, even in new versions, I don't think you can actually get over the mountain with that kind of three wind. So we just have to go around as much as we can, which, uh, you know, using the Acro Glide. Then we're going to use the accurate sticky Marlin, throw it up in the air, let it come around and get somewhat close. So it makes it an easy crab shot. Former crab, now it's a dagger. <laughs> and big square. Big square wasn't any easier back then than it is now. So I would just take the accurate glide manta and send it nice and wide and let it carry all the way back. Miss those trees, which is nice. Get a good slide. Only have 32 feet, makes it pretty pretty easy, and yeah, stays in. So that's good. All right, our next set of holes are all sunshine. So we have a one wind. With that wind, it actually wasn't possible to make it over the mountain and cut the corner. So instead, just throwing a skip disc, getting a lot of bounce. You'll see that uh, skip discs are really really skippy. And doing the old, old approach, slides up there nicely, only 11 feet, in with the crab, another birdie. Alright, so this particular hole, just throwing the old marlin, getting it close, not really ace running anything. 25 feet, yeah, pretty routine, nice easy crab shot. Easy birdie. 
and our final hole on Sunshine. Again, just uh, taking the old standard default uh, aim and throwing the old Marlin, getting it close for a tap in, and moving on to the final three holes. So this was kind of a newish hole, and so I was trying various uh, lines to see if I could figure out what to do with it. Sent it wide, and you can see the wind just carries that and gets it back and almost puts it into the water. But instead I got 17 feet and I was pretty pleased with that kind of amount left. Made it very simple to get the birdie. This hole we got five wind. You don't see five anymore. That has been eliminated from the game so now four is the maximum speed. But we're gonna try and just bite off as much as we can with the old skip disc. Gets a pretty good bounce, gets another really good bounce and check that out. Nice, nice shot. Only 25 feet, stays in, and a wonderful eagle. Eagles are really routine on this hole, but back in the day, it was uh, something special. Now with a five wind on this one, you could forget about going for it. So just trying to get somewhere safe, and then just try and get close to the basket area. If you look to the left, you'll see how much that tree is just rocking from that five wind. It's pretty amazing. So. A little mud skip which is now a fuse and left me a 26 footer with that wind uh, you wanted to get it as close as possible so 26 feet works out pretty well so that is a total score of 21 which you know isn't all that impressive but check it out it puts you at the top of the leaderboard and ties with the infamous Derek and that's what a vintage open looks like where you only have uh, Manta as your fastest disc, so it's essentially playing with muskets. And yeah, things have changed quite a bit for the better. Thanks for watching, and this has been David Slee, and I will catch you later.